Good morning, dear friends, and welcome back to our 100 Days with God program. And today is day 25, 25th day of this program. We still have 75 days to go. And to start, let us pray and bow our heads for prayer. Loving Father in heaven, we ask you, Lord, to enlighten us once again this morning as we study your word. Give us the wisdom we need. And thank you, loving Father in heaven, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to instruct us and guide us as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, Psalms 25 consists of 22 verses. It's a little bit longer than yesterday. Now let's begin reading verse 1. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 2. In you I trust, O my God, do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 3. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. 4. Show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths. 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. 6. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. 7. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. 8. Good and upright is, is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. 9. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. 10. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. For those who keep the demands of his covenant. 11. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. 12. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. 13. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. 14. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. 15. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. 16. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. 17. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. 18. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. 19. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. 20. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. 21. My, may integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. And last verse, redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. What I love and hear, dear friends, beginning in verse 1 to verse 21, David made this genuine confession to God about his worries, about his troubles, about his need, and of course, a true confession of all his sins. He even mentioned here in verse 11, For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. He knew how sinner he was. And he was honest to God, telling about his status a sinner, a great sinner before God. David was honest to God, and that is why he was called as a man after God's own heart in the book of Acts, because of his honesty. And here he said, after, after he asked forgiveness of the Lord in verse 12, that was verse 11 when he asked forgiveness of the Lord. In 12 he said, Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. And 13, he will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. Meaning there will be so much blessings. If God cannot give it to your time, if God cannot provide that full blessings in your time, but because of your faithfulness and your relationship and your commitment to him, 
than the following descendants after you. We'll all have the privileges they want to all get. Just imagine that after David, it was Solomon, his son, and the rest of the time of Solomon have enjoyed lavishly the blessings that God afforded to them. The only problem with Solomon during his backsliding years when he went away from God instead worshipping idols. That was the problem that he was not able to maintain and he was not able to be faithful like his father was. But despite of the fact, God never and never tried to invade Israel, never handed Israel to the enemies because he promised David that the whole lifetime of his son Solomon as a king in Israel, it will be all peace and no wars. So, God is truly providing blessings. Even the next descendant is not really faithful to him. But because he made a promise to someone who was faithful and committed to him. Now, dear friends, if you're looking at the world and hoping for a better future for the next generation, even as we can see right now that this new generation right now are more on social media, on TikTok, dancing, all these things. And you could have this imagination like 30, 40 years from now, how this world look like if the people will lead this country, if the people will lead out this community, will have this kind of principle. We're not prejudging them. But as we can see, but as we can see around, the morality is degrading. I have to tell you quite frankly about that. But if we continue to be faithful and if we continue to be committed to God, then there will be a good future still for the next two, three generations because of that promise and commitment that God will be promising to you if will not be afforded during your lifetime, then God will, will hand it over to your descendants in the next generation. We need to set examples now as we are still alive so that the next generation of people will follow, will have an example to look at. And realization is always there, but there is a need to be someone who will be leading out and doing it first that others will be able to look at and will, will be able to see that. And like David himself, he knew that when he's gone, there will be no future with his kingdom. And so he must have to do an example for the people to follow in the next generations. And here, what I love here, the last verse, he said, Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. I know, during the time of David, even he was the bravest, he was the popular king, but still... Uh, the attacks in the surrounding nations is still prevailing. You cannot rely on them because they will find any chances that they could get inside the kingdom of God, Israel. And maybe not only wars, but even bad and evil influence that they could interact with the Israelites from the inside. And those influence Israelites inside the kingdom will have more influence to do with their relatives and community and like underground influence in which that is more creepy than the attack itself by wars and by force and so there are important verses here that I'd like to stress out though we have already like discussed about the whole thing of this chapter but David here in verse 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So these are the powerful verses here. Let me read again. 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. 5. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God and my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. 6. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. 8. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. 9. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. What, what have you noticed here in these following verses, dear friends? It is really giving us the impact in our personal relationship, in our personal connection with God. This is how David teaches us to talk to God personally. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Total dependence, showing total humility to God. David himself here provided us a good example how to humble ourselves before God, how to show ourselves as vulnerable without God. And that is why we need His strength, we need His grace, we need His power, we need His helping hands, we need His protection, we need His deliverance. And this is how David showed us that example. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remembers me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Dear friends, we're still far to finish this off. We still have 75 days to go. But to me personally, we have learned a lot already from these 25 days of devotional study that we study one chapter of the book of Psalms a day. It is far more than an apple a day keeps the doctor away. A chapter a, chapter a day keeps the enemy away but it doesn't mean that the enemy will not have any chances to come back he will but if we have this consistent relationship with god and have this attitude to consistently be a student of the word of god then we'll have all the strength not from ourselves but from god himself through the agency of the Holy Spirit, imparting us the strength, imparting us Christ's righteousness, that we may overcome that daily and that weekly and monthly and that hourly sin and temptations that Satan may introduce to us back. God will be our protector, redeemer, and a deliverer in the time of the situation that you need it most, dear brothers and sisters. But always remember this David's example of how to humble ourselves, verses 4 to 9. This is how we supposed to make conversation with God. And David gave us this example for us to follow. And I'm happy, I'm glad. Hallelujah to God that we have this recorded writings of David. The book of Psalms have other contributors aside from David, but most of the chapters are written by him and his scribe. And we are thankful today that they have spent a lot of time writing, recording all these David's conversations to God through hymns. And now we're reading we don't know how to sing this one in David's tune, but we knew how David's honesty and how genuine he was when he conversed with God in each chapter of the book of Psalms. 
this described David's life and in his daily undertakings. And now we are giving this example right now, how we have to humble ourselves to God and in what way that we can talk to him like a friend. Because God wants a relationship. God does not want an instant order. He wants a relationship to you and me. And as we continue this relationship with God, then God can make us grow better. That His reflection of grace will be seen outside as well. And that way, each of you, each of us can be His vessels of blessings, channels of blessings and His instruments outside that others in the dark will be able to see how blessed we are in this relationship we have with God. Now let us pray. Gracious loving Father in heaven, we thank you for your help, for the wisdom and understanding that you have provided us this morning. May you bless all the viewers out there, despite of their struggles, of their sufferings that they're facing right now. We're praying that may you be with them, Lord. Provide the needs. And bless all their undertakings, their endeavors, their work, their job, their families, and their commitment to you in the church, in the community, to help others. We may not be united here in this world, but loving Father in heaven, I pray that all the viewers of this video, all throughout the world, we may not have a chance to be united in this world, but I hope and pray that in the world to come, I'll be able to see them one by one, praising God with my whole family and their whole families as well. Thank you, Lord, that you will bless this hope, that you will bless our wishes, that you will bless our prayers, and we submit everything into your hands in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, if you consider supporting this channel, you can go down to the description box below and see for yourself. All the details are added there. And if in case you missed the previous days of this program, I'll try to put all the links down there, including the introductory video of this program as well. And if you love doing or starting your own garden please do so visit our gardening channel as well we have featured several steps right there and i hope that we can also share some vital information though i'm not really an expert yet in the garden even i grew up in a farm but i'm trying to do my best that i can share positivity to others and of course some little information that are really important in gardening. So thank you for watching once again and stay tuned. There will be more. I want to see you all again tomorrow.